Hey viewers, today we will be talking about trigonometry. There's a lot to tell about this subject, so for today we will stick to the basics. Today we'll, we will take a look at two things. First of all, the relations between angles and sides in a right triangle. And second, the use of the sine and cosine to calculate x and y components of vectors. So the two subjects have completely different applications, but we will see that they are actually the same. A right triangle is a triangle with a 90 degree angle. Armed with the knowledge that the sum of the three angles is 180 degrees, that means that the two remaining angles sum up to 90 degrees. This in turn means that if we know one of the remaining two angles, we know the other one as well. The relations between the angles and sides in a right triangle are usually defined as the sine is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, the cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Since I don't like to just learn things by heart, I will give you a method of deriving these definitions. Imagine we have a triangle with an angle of nearly zero degrees. We can easily see that the x component, the adjacent side, becomes the same length as the hypotenuse. Looking at the graphs of the sine and cosine, we can see that the cosine is one where the angle is zero. Therefore, the relation between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse is the cosine. Obviously, we can do the same for the opposite side, which becomes zero when the angle becomes zero. From the graphs, we can see that the sine is zero when the angle is zero. So the relation between the opposite side and the hypotenuse is the sine wave. The remaining function, the tangent, should be viewed as the steepness of the hypotenuse, y divided by x. Since we just saw that y is the sine and x is the cosine, this becomes tangent is sine divided by cosine, is opposite divided by hypotenuse, divided by adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Rearranging gives tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. Let's apply what we've just learned to an actual problem. We have a triangle with an angle of 30 degrees and the length of one side given. Calculate the other sides. Obviously, we have three situations here. The length of the opposite side is given, the length of the adjacent side is given, and the length of the hypotenuse is given. Since we know the three formulas to calculate the relations between sides and angles, the results become like this. We will do one more problem before we move on. We have a triangle where the length of two of the sides are given, and we're going to have to calculate the angles. Obviously, we have three situations. Uh, the length of the opposite side and the length of the adjacent side are given. The length of the adjacent side and the length of the hypotenuse are given. And the length of the hypotenuse and the length of the opposite side are given. With the same three formulas, we can calculate all we need to know. And here you see the results. Well, on to the second part of this video then. Imagine we have a vector, which is a geometric object that has a magnitude or length and a direction. If we want to split this vector into X and Y components, we can use the formulas from before. Uh, using X is cosine angle times the length of the vector and Y is sine of the angle times the length of the vector. As you might already be able to see, the vector X as the hypotenuse of the triangle. The X and Y axis make up the adjacent and opposite sides. In conclusion, vector calculations can be treated pretty much in the same way as right triangles calculations. I hope you learned something today and I will see you next time.